Welcome to FOMO Consulting for your daily AMC stock analysis video on Tuesday, May 11th. The clock is about to strike 12, ladies and gentlemen. Our opponent is running out of time. As always, the apes are winning, the diamond hands are winning, and certainly the retail investor is winning. So if you find this video informative and entertaining, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. It is a newer channel, and I would certainly appreciate the support. Let's get into the video. As always, I would like to thank each and every one of you who has liked, comment, shared, and subscribed. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you. Let's we'll start with a quote. He who works all day has no time to make money. John D. Rockefeller. Certainly, Mr. Rockefeller knows all about making money, right? And knows how to reinvest and create wealth. I believe soon we will all have the ability to make money without working so hard. That is my wish and that is my hope for each and every one of you. So let's look at the broader market today. Not good is the theme of the day. <laughs> Tech took a beating. Blue chips, uh, for the most part, took a beating. Amazon and Apple were actually green, but the Dow absolutely got slammed nearly 500 points down, down 473 points. Uh, just a rough day in the market. Uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of factors going into this, but uh, I certainly believe the market will correct sooner rather than later, but tech is certainly taken a hit and that has affected AMC to some degree via the NASDAQ. So let's look at today's action. It, we could not be in a better place. We regained $10. We closed at $10.05, up 30 cents, 3.08%. I'll take that each and every day. After hours, we're up uh, at the time of this recording at $10.12, up 7 cents. Uh, certainly not yesterday's after hours action, but we're still green and I will take it. But overall, regaining that $10 level is exceptionally important. And you can see how AMC certainly followed the overall broader market today. So let's take a little quicker look at the technicals. So this is the hourly chart. Uh, and I want to show you the, obviously the moving average. We are clearly flattening out and turning more bullish. The MACD, we still have some work to do based on the last uh, week, week and a half. We've certainly taken a dive uh, downwards into bearish territory, but I do see a tightening of the MACD and I expect a bullish crossover uh, within the next week or so. RSI is in the neutral area, but uh, looking quite good. But if you look at the overall trend of the hourly chart, we are no doubt uh, still moving in an upward direction. So let's look at the bigger picture zooming out to the daily chart. The moving average has no doubt started to make a bullish move upwards, as you can see on the top. And the MACD is now almost touching the signal line once again, uh, hopefully to make a uh, bullish crossover. I do believe once that happens, we will be uh, moving upwards quite quickly. So the walls are closing in on the shorts, without a doubt. There is no escape. AMC is a recovering company. It will regain its prior prominence, no doubt. The rules and regulations from the NSCC, DTCC, SEC are all closing them in and we on the floor, the apes will not allow an escape. The only way to escape is to squeeze. So as I said yesterday, if you're gonna start your trading day, you might as well listen to some music about making money. So you should try, look on YouTube or your other music platforms, take a listen to Billy Joel, Easy Money. It's a fantastic song. Uh, upbeat, get you prepped for the trading day. I usually turn on some good money making music around 925 before opening bell. So again, just another quick look at how the stock traded after earnings in early March. Uh, leading up to earnings, we were beaten down a little bit. Uh, no different than what happened last week. 
After earnings, we absolutely skyrocketed up to $14.54. We are now three green days in a row. I do not find this to be coincidence. So what I want to show you here is, let's look at GameStop prior to the squeeze. So what you're looking at is short interest trend data, uh, all of the lines that you see along the orange bar at the top, that is all of these short interest trends, meaning shares on loan, free float on loan, estimated short interest, estimated short interest of free float. As you can see, there's a huge variance and divergence between the price action and the short interest data. No doubt when the squeeze happened, the price tried to find those trend lines, and I do believe it would have uh, without all the issues with Robinhood and the other trading platforms. But if you look very closely, uh, look at the gray volume bars. You can clearly see where over the course of uh, the couple of months prior to, there's a lot of uh, borrowed share volume. That is what you're looking at. The gray volume bars are borrowed shares. If you look at the date of the squeeze, you see where there's a huge, huge spike equal to the price, if not more so, in borrowed shares to short. So let's move forward. So let's take a closer look. So what you're looking at here is the utilization, which at that time prior to the squeeze was at 100%. The cost to borrow is the purple trend line. Cost to borrow was only in the low 20s. I think we know we're a bit higher now. And the shares on loan are is the red trend line. So if you look compared to AMC today, right, we have 150 million shares on loan. At that time, GME only had around 50 million. The utilization was at 100% and the borrow fee was around 20 to 25 in that ballpark. But again, look at the gray uh, borrowed shares and look leading right up to the squeeze. You see a market drop. They borrowed and then they started covering and the price started running up. Let's move forward. So again, this is GME, this is the shares on loan volume. If you look leading up to the squeeze, you can see where the borrowed share volume dropped off substantially, even before the actual squeeze occurred. Let's move forward. So this is AMC, and this is through yesterday. So let's just look at the yellow arrows you can clearly see the short interest trend data is exponentially higher than GME before its squeeze. You also see that major fall off of share volume prior to the squeeze, and you also see bullish price action slowly building towards uh, the actual squeeze event. Now, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not uh, trying to tell you the squeeze will happen tomorrow, but what I am suggesting is the factors are in play. The short uh, share borrow volume is clearly falling off, but the short interest trend lines are clearly uh, diverge from the price. They are exceptionally higher than GME before its squeeze. And I feel more than confident each and every time I research this data. So let's look at how the two are connected. So obviously the green and red uh, candles you see are AMC. And this is over a six month period. The blue uh, line is actually the GME price uh, action overlaid on top of uh, AMC. You can clearly see how they move together, uh, albeit GME has been far more violent, far uh, more volatile from a price action standpoint, but I believe AMC is so exceptionally heavily shorted at this time 
we will meet a, uh, a squeeze similar to GME, if not greater than. If you look prior to both squeezes in late January, you see where they're both relatively flat. Both are absolutely suppressed by short interest, but then they both had obviously their own versions of a squeeze. I believe AMC is poised for a much larger squeeze based on the short data, the borrowed shares, all of the data that's coming together. So let's research what they did today. So the green arrows are uh, the return shares and borrowed shares. Down at the bottom, I know there's a lot of buzz around the cost to borrow all of a sudden popped up on Ortex of 200% or more. Uh, we'll get into that very shortly, but as the morning started at 9.30, they returned 40,000 shares. They borrowed 663. However, they probably had around 2 million, based on my math, uh, from yesterday. So, which is why you saw the price get driven down right at the opening bill as normal. Let's move forward. So, around lunchtime, they had returned 41,000 shares. And they borrowed 1.37 million shares. <laughs> so they clearly were borrowing, which is why, again, the uh, borrow fee keeps escalating. They are shorting it down, suppressing the price, and I believe they are resetting their positions uh, really hour by hour just to stave off a squeeze. So let's look at how they closed the trading day today. So they return 2 million shares. They borrowed 1.7 million shares throughout the day. Uh, so they actually covered around 280,000 shares. I do believe that was late in the day. You could certainly see some of the positive price action when we popped, uh, you know, $10.15, $10.20, whatever. I believe that they were covering, which is evidenced by these 300 uh, return shares uh, above and beyond the normal price action, the buying and selling from other retail investors and what have you. So let's move forward. All right. So what I want to show you now is the options uh, chain information for ex the options expiring this Friday, May 14th. The data you see on the right side of the screen is from yesterday. The left side is today. You can clearly see in between the green lines, which is where I believe the true battle will be this week. Uh, you, on the left side, you see the calls, and on the right side, you see the puts. There is a heavy, heavy, heavy concentration of calls in between 10 and $11, uh, nearly 50,000 uh, open contracts. That has increased uh, quite a bit from yesterday, especially at the $11 strike. There is not a huge amount of change on the put side day over day. I find this to be exceptionally bullish once again. So let's look at the big money trades today on the options. If you notice, there are calls and puts uh, pretty well equally sp spread throughout on the largest. Uh, they're all 1,250 contracts, uh, ironically, at a $50 strike uh, on different expiration dates. You've got May 21st, you've got June 18th, all kind of spread throughout. Uh, obviously, there's hedging going on, but I find it exceptionally bullish that they're all set at a $15 strike price on the largest sales today. So this is what really caught my eye around uh, the options volume today. And I'll just look at this for uh, bullish or bear sentiment. We are at five to one in favor of calls in favor of the bulls. That is absolutely huge. So most of the money coming in is on the bullish side on the call side. Let's look at the short interest today. So overall versus yesterday, the uh, today's data is on top. Yesterday's data is on the bottom as a comparative. So the exchange reported short interest is a, uh, actually a little bit less than yesterday. We are down about 7 uh, million shares. Estimated short interest of free float is about the same at 23.7. Uh, 
Uh, percent of free flow to own loan is about the same at 36.6%. Shares on loan are about the same at 153 million. Days to cover keeps incrementally rising on Ortex at 1.71. Again, I believe we are trending probably at this point around four days, if not uh, between four and five. Cost to borrow continues to go up uh, on Ortex to 17.87. Extraordinarily low versus Fintel. We'll get into that here shortly. Utilization is still at 100%. So we still own 74.1% of the stock as a retail investor. Total volume was 49.4 million, which is actually uh, substantially higher by around 10 million shares uh, traded uh, versus the last couple of days. Short shares available, a whopping 2,000. So get yours before they, while they last. <laughs> Short borrow fee on Fentel is again incrementally rising to 81.77%. Take that with a big grain of salt. So what I want to show you now is very, very interesting. So I know the uh, social media is abuzz with this 200 plus percentage uh, for cost to borrow, right? Uh, based on Ortex. So I went looking and let's find some, uh, some stocks that were 200% or more uh, at any given time. So this article goes back to May 27th, 2020. So there are three stocks, the uh, the first three uh, in the ranking. They are 264%, uh, 237%, and 190%. So what I want to do is show you how these stocks reacted at that level of short borrow fee. So let's look at the first one. So this is the most heavily shorted. This is CTIB, 264% short borrow fee. So the orange bar is the date of this article, of the date of the data that's presented. So you can see around the time of that, it was trading a little over $1. Shortly thereafter, about two weeks, the price obviously popped at a squeeze of sorts to $8.37 as a high. Again, penny stock, whatever, but that's eight times money. So let's look at the next one. So obviously date of article is the orange bar the price action was pretty well flat and slammed. It was at 237% short borrow fee percentage at that time. And quite frankly, the stock never really recovered. It never had a squeeze anywhere around the time of that article. They pretty much beat it to death. So let's look at the next one that is more than exciting. So this is CPSH. Orange bar, date of article, date of data, 190%. You can see pretty well flat leading up to the article time frame, which was in late May of 2020. Uh, had to wait a little while. Several months later, that stock went from around $2, uh, actually yeah, around $1.50, and shot up to $30 even, nearly 30 times money. We don't know right now where we are in the process, but even the smallest of stocks can go up 30 times money. And when you get to this level of short borrow fee and the short interest data that we are experiencing today, it can happen tomorrow, it can happen a month from now, it can happen a week, we just don't know. But it sure is fun to watch. So let me give you a quick little bonus. Uh, I usually don't tap into other stocks, but I wanted to show you uh, something that I've been watching, and uh, I personally, again, I'm not a financial advisor, not financial advice. However, I, I wanted to look at Dogecoin, because I am a crypto guy, versus uh, Stellar. And I've, I'm invested in both, so full disclaimer. 
Stellar, if you look on top, uh, which is XLM, which recently came to Weeble, uh, that you're able to trade it. If you look just at the price action chart, and you don't have to be a technical analyst to figure out that is a good looking uh, upward trend. It is stair stepping, it is incrementally growing. Uh, this is over a period of six months versus Doge, which is on the bottom. Obviously, Doge has made an incredible run. We don't know what it's going to look like over the next days and weeks. But if you look at the price action of Stellar, XLM USD, uh, it is a nice little grinding upward uh, play. And again, I am personally invested in it. I am not recommending you buy or anything else. Again, not financial advice. I just want to show you uh, some of the things that I notice and that I see, and I would just want to share them and, and pass them along. So as always, I have skin in the game. I was up today like you, I'm sure, or I hope you were, uh, but I am diamond hand to the bitter end, and I hope that uh, the end is near, but it certainly is a fun ride, right? So I still hold to my bold, bold end of week prediction of $10 to, uh, $10 to $11.50. Uh, I may adjust this as the week goes on. We'll see how the price action, but I do believe based on the uh, calls, based on the options data, uh, that 10 to $11 is going to be a major uh, battle zone. Well, let's close with a quote. It is a blessing for a man to have a hand in determining his own fate. By Edward Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard the Infamous Pirate. I believe that we all have our hand in our own fate in this stock by buying, holding, believing, sharing information. We certainly have our hand in our own fate, and I hope our fate uh, is a squeeze. I hope we all uh, get what we all dream of. Uh, so that is my wish and my hope. So as always, I want to thank you for watching today. If you found the video informative and entertaining, I hope you like, certainly share, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. It would mean the world to me. It is a newer channel. But as always, I hope your lives are full of green candles. Hope you have a great night. Thank you.